Kelly Marie Alvarez here for Simon Says Stamp, and I'm going to be making an Easter penny slider card today. So first I'm stamping out some super cute images from Lon Fawn's new Chirpy Chirp Chirp stamp set, and I'm going to be using my Copic markers to color them in. These are my three favorite yellows for coloring in these little chicks from the set. I just love them. It really gives the bird a nice little glow, but he still has a great yellow color to him. And then I'll go ahead and color in his beak and his feet. I'm laying down my light color first to kind of wet the paper and then my darker color over it. And I feel like this helps it blend a little bit better into my lighter marker as I blend into the white part of the egg there, keeping the top part the lightest. Now I had a little trouble blending these colors together, so I'm going to touch the tip of the lighter marker to the darker marker to create a medium shade, and it's going to help those colors blend in together and look really, really great. Next I'm going to color in the little paintbrush, and I just love these colors for the paintbrush. That toner gray looks like a little metal piece there, and um, E31 and E34 really kind of look like wood. And so there you can see the little paintbrush is all done, and now I can use the coordinating dies to cut out all of these images. I'm going to hold them in place with some post-it note tape and run it through my die cut machine, and then you'll see here that we've got some great die cut images. I just love popping them out of the dies. It looks so cute. And now all of my images are ready to go for this card. Next, I'm going to trim some noble fir cardstock to two and a quarter by five inches, and this is going to be the top part of our slider. I'm now using Lon Fawn's flower border die right along the top of this great little green piece here. And you'll see these adorable little flowers now that are at the top. I'm just going to go ahead and punch out all of the pieces. And now I'm ready to start working on the penny slider. So I'm using my ruler here and I'm going to make a mark at three quarters of an inch from the left side and three quarters of an inch from the right side. Then I'm going to turn the paper on its side and do the same thing, three quarters of an inch up from the bottom and three quarters of an inch up from the bottom. Now that I have those marks done, I'm just going to extend the lines just a little bit. You'll see I'm going to use my ruler to help me out. Sorry for my head there, but you really have to get on top of this to make sure you're getting everything nice and straight. So I'm making some horizontal lines there, and then I'm going to extend the vertical lines too. And so now there's going to be an X marks the spot area, so I'm going to know where to punch my holes. So right there, I'm just going to once again extend those lines and create a little crosshatch, which you can kind of see there. It's a little hard to see on that dark green cardstock. Then I'm taking a normal office hole punch, just one that you have on your desk, and you're going to line it up right into the center of that crosshatch that we created. So right there, you see I'm going to line it up and punch a hole, and then punch a hole right on the other side, right in the lines of those crosshatches. Then I can go ahead and erase those lines and now start working on the sliding part. So I'm using a metal ruler and I'm connecting the very bottoms of those circles. And I'm just going to run that X-Acto knife once again right through. And then I'm going to connect the very top of the circles. And this doesn't have to be perfect. Just kind of line it up, kind of eyeball it, and then just run your X-Acto knife right there. And I like to use a metal edged ruler because I feel like the X-Acto knife really glides well on it. Now you'll see that it's almost all done there. All I need to do is just grab my scissors and kind of trim it out because I didn't get it completely perfect, but that's okay because you can just trim it out and no one's gonna see those little imperfections. So I'll just trim one side and then finish up and trim the other. And this is super easy to do. It goes by really, really quick. So now that we have the track for our penny here, so you'll see right there, there's a track. We need to create a base for it. So I'm going to use the same cardstock there and trim a place five inches by an inch and a quarter. And now you'll see that this piece is going to line up behind that slider and kind of make it look seamless. Now you'll see that my back piece was a little too tall there behind that hill. So I just trimmed that little piece off so that none of it is showing above the hill. Next, I'm going to use a micro glue dot to attach my little paintbrush to my chick. And then now it's time to work with the penny portion of this. So here is my penny. And you'll see that this is what's going to slide in that track. So it's going to move all the way down and then back. So the next thing we need to do is create a raised area so that this penny is able to move freely. So I'm going to use some scotch foam roll tape here and I'm just going to bend it right in half to make it double thick so that that penny can slide really, really well. 
then I'm going to cut a third of this strip off because I really need a nice skinny piece so that it doesn't get in the way of the penny. Now I'm going to take this skinny piece and lay that right along the bottom edge and then cut another third off of my strip and start to create this whole well that's going to kind of support this base and let the penny slide through. So you'll see there now I've got nice foam going all the way around and that penny is still going to be able to move freely. Next, I want to make sure that my penny only moves straight within the track. So I'm taking a foam square here and I'm cutting it in half and you'll see that it's going to fit right inside of this track. And that's going to keep the penny from spinning around because I just want it to slide, I don't want it to spin. So you'll see that that foam piece fits perfectly in that track. You can just trim it to fit just slightly smaller than that track. And now I can peel off the liner and attach my egg to that foam piece. So I'm going to hold that right in place and then I can line that egg right on top and it's going to adhere to that foam square. And now we've kind of trapped that penny in and you can see that it's able to move in that track. So now that that's all set up, I can peel off all the liner of that double foam tape we added earlier and line up the back piece on there. And that's to make it look nice and seamless so you don't really even see the track because there's green behind it too. Now here I have some mermaid cardstock that I'm going to cut with the largest of Lawn Fawn's large stitch rectangle dies. And now I'm going to have a nice stitched edge for my sky. And then I'm going to start working on these flowers. So I'm taking some sugar plum cardstock, guava cardstock, and sunflower cardstock, and I'm cutting it with that same flower border die. And then I'm just going to trim off the tops of these flowers. So I'm just going to go ahead and cut all the flowers that I need off, just like that, out of all of the colors. And then I can go and just trim off that kind of little nub that's right on the end there. So I'm just going to trim that piece off. And now I can have multicolored flowers on my flower border. So I'm just using a little bit of liquid glue and just laying that right on top. And this actually goes by super quickly because you just die cut, cut, and glue. Now it's time to tape down my little chick right on the end there. It's going to cover up that hole on the left side. And then I'm going to use the same die that I did for the mermaid cardstock and cut some white cardstock with it. And that's because I want to use the puffy cloud die to create a cute little cloud for the top of my scene. So I'm just kind of guessing about where I want it. I'm going to die cut it. And then I'm going to stamp one of the sentiments from Chirpy Chirp Chirp, which guess what it says Chirpy Chirp Chirp. And it's in some noble fur ink so that it coordinates with my grassy area. I'm creating a card base that is four inches by five and a quarter. And then I'm going to stamp the translation Happy Easter from Chirpy Chirp Chirp on the inside. I'm going to cover this with some guava cardstock, then lay down my mermaid stitch rectangle piece. And then I can tape down my cool slider mechanism. It's going to tape that right along the bottom and then use some foam tape to attach my cloud sentiment area. And now here you can see the final card. It's so happy and springy. I love the sentiment on the inside, the translation, Happy Easter. And this slider is so much fun. I just love twisting this card. I think it would make absolutely anybody's day. And you can also push it with your finger too. Another fun variation on this card would be to have the bird moving instead, but I just thought it was really funny to have the egg move. I thought it was really cute, and I thought it would make a kid really smile. So thank you guys so much for watching, and I hope you have an absolutely amazing day. Bye!